Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a new video about Sugarcube speakers because most of the returns I get on sound decoders are when people have used the Sugarcube speakers incorrectly so I thought if more people find out how to use them or maybe not to use them at all um, it might save a few returns which will end up saving all of us a bit of money and a bit of hassle so the first thing to mention is that this is the speaker, a Sugarcube kit, which comes as standard with a Loxon 5 decoder, whether you're getting a micro or a standard size decoder. So that's what would come already connected to the decoder if you don't choose something else. On my website, I offer a free upgrade, so potentially you might want to do that. Um, well, I definitely would do that, to be honest. You can either choose the recommended speaker, in most cases I can choose a specific one if you know what you want. But they're all like speakers that are this kind of shape and size, so some might be flatter, some might be a bit deeper, some might be wider, whatever. But they're all suitable for different models, and if you're choosing the recommended option, I'm going to suggest something that I know will fit into the model that you're using. So that would be my first piece of advice to go for one of the upgrades. But if you do want to use the Sugarcube speaker, there's a few things that you need to be really careful of. So the first thing is that this is a kit, so that implies it's not ready to use. So if you try and use that speaker on its own, it's going to sound terrible. So you definitely want to avoid that. What you have to do is use this little plastic enclosure kit. The most important thing about this is that it has to be airtight. So it's a little bit strange because that seems like the face of the speaker but actually that goes against the enclosure so it goes on the inside and gets trapped in. So you can use just the base like this or you can build it up with these pieces to be the depth that you want. So for example here I've got three pieces so I've got the base and the two sides and then the speaker so it makes quite a big speaker so you just super glue that together um, has to be airtight as well so you've got to smear some glue or make sure you use plenty of glue inside it when you're putting it together so that there's no gaps so I guess that's another reason not to use it but that's what you end up with this one's been made a little bit thinner but this one's had the glue smeared around the outside and it's ready to use. So you can use that or you can potentially just use something like that, which is likely to fit in the same types of models, unless you're really limited for space. Um, but you don't have to do anything with that one that's ready to use and it'll sound better as well. So that's the first bit of advice. And then the second thing is people keep incorrectly using these in the sense that those two contacts on the back of the speaker are live and they're exposed so you don't want those to be touching anything metal and you don't want them to touch each other because it'll break the decoder so what I keep finding is for example people will be testing the model and they'll have the speaker just either next to the model or on top of it and it'll fall down onto the track when the loco moves because they've not secured it yet and then the full power from the track goes up into the speaker through the speaker wires into the amplifier and then I'll get an email to say that there's no sound from the decoder um, and usually when you inspect the decoder when it comes back you can see where there's a hole on the heat shrink around the amplifier so that's really common another problem that people often have is that they'll get the chassis um, and it's got all these different exposed parts. It's hard to say which bits are live and which bits are not. But they'll put the speaker on there like that, touching something that's metal. Um, any of those could be live or it could create a shot or anything. So you've got the same problem again. So if you do insist on using the Sugarcube speaker and you genuinely don't think there's anything else that'll fit, um, I would just double check with me first because there are some really small ready to use speakers that probably will fit but yeah if that's the speaker you settled on then you'll also need something like this captain tape um, it's a really thin insulating tape and you can just stick some to the back of the speaker make sure it goes across all the live parts of it and then it's not going to touch anything obviously when you're positioning it have the plastic side down 
that's going to limit how much it can touch as well. But you never know if there's going to be a little bits of metal in the body or anything. Like some of the detail parts sometimes in models or the grills are metal. So you just have to be really conscious of what's metal and what it's going to touch. So yeah, that's kind of the purpose of the video, just to, to make sure that people know how to use their speakers correctly. And really to try and advise people to go for one of the free speaker upgrades. Um, you'll notice on the website that you can pay to have the speaker connected as well. So if you are choosing one of these upgrades and the reason that you didn't want to go for it was because you thought you were going to have to connect it, um, that's not the case because you can pay the small charge for me to do it for you. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning as well is that if you are connecting it yourself, use a little bit of heat shrink. Um, so you can buy this on the website as well. Um, and the captain tape's available on the website. Um, and you just need a small length of heat shrink over each wire and you can just, once you've soldered it, you can just use the side of your soldering iron to melt it across the joint and that gives it full protection then. Um, if I've already done that for you, I'll have already put heat shrink on it to protect it. So not only is it more protected to fit a upgraded speaker, it also sounds better and there's less work involved because you're not having to build the enclosure. So hopefully that's helped and hopefully it saves a few people from damaging decoders. If you've got any comments, leave one below. And if you've got any questions, you can send me an email. I'll put my email address in the description. Thanks for watching.